Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations coming from thought leaders within the digital infrastructure industry. And we are coming to you live. That's right, we are live, Mark. Live. Um, we are live uh, at Data Cloud USA in the Lone Star State of Austin, Texas. And you're in for a real treat because sitting next to me is Mr. Mark Gusakov. And Mark is, it's a little long title, Mark Here is the go. Advisory Board Government's Chair for Nomad Futurists, who we love. Absolutely. And Mark is also the Chief Certification Officer for the International Data Center Authority. It is a mouthful, but trust me, you're in for a real treat. Mark, Welcome to JSA TV. Oh my God, dude! Thank you so much for having me. This is wonderful. What a turnout! Look at the crowd. No, it Energy's really is at an all-time high. I love it's, it. It's almost a little too noisy for me. I mean, I'm like, I'm here with Mark. You all need to be quiet. It's okay. <laughs> I have a big mouth, and if, and I'm known for it in the industry, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So we've got a few things to talk about. I, I suspect we'll get through the first question. Sure. Uh, maybe, maybe the second question. Uh -oh. um, but so let's talk about the uh, the main factors contributing to the workforce and labor crisis within our industry. Workforce, labor crisis, go. My goodness. I mean, not just are we forced with an age out that's coming up on us, right? Because it's about three quarters of our industry has 20 plus years or even 10 plus years yes. in the industry. So it's the number is three quarters of the industry has a decade or more. Yeah. But about half, like a little less than half has 20 plus years. And that just screams retirement to me. I mean, <laughs> look, I'm not a spring chicken by yeah. any means, but... We need to start bringing in talent yes. in a different demographic. We need to start pulling in people that are of diverse backgrounds. We need to start thinking about inclusion, belonging. But we also need to focus on not just college anymore. Mm -hmm. This is a big problem. I mean, yes. Long gone are the days where it says you, we must have a degreed engineer on staff. I know yes. a lot of engineers with a great engineering mindset that don't have a degree. But we need to be focusing on skilled trades, need to be focusing on our military service people that are transitioning out and trying to come into an industry and bring them into this industry. How many people do you know that are Navy nukes? I mean, these are the people that keep brilliant, our, keep dedicated, <laughs> planet safe, yeah, yeah. and they're living inside of a nuclear reactor yeah, in a little yeah. shell for Hello. months on end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they don't have the hair that we do most most of the time. But <laughs> mine I mean, is all natural, nothing to do with any. Outside. Me too. Yeah, I wake up every day looking like this. But this is this is what we need to be bringing the issue. We need fresh thinking. We need to start moving away from you know the, the older generation. We need new insight. We need yes. fresh ways to think. One of the things that we're doing really well in the Nomad Futurist is we're really focused on demystifying digital infrastructure for the emerging talent. Mm -hmm. It's a secret. I mean, that nobody knows what we're doing and what we're all about. And until I can start getting Super Bowl commercial airtime yeah. to go on national TV, Next which, year. by the way, in December, national TV, the Shavis Chronicles, I went on and talked about our industry to the best of my ability, I love tried it. to represent love it, it as well as I could. Yes. Because our media perception in this industry is everybody knows we are not the most favorable entity. Yeah. Everybody wants their Netflix. Everybody wants a reliable 5G cell phone service. Yes. People want their Amazon packages delivered on time and two-day delivery. Yeah. But they don't necessarily want a data center in their backyard. So what are we doing for community engagement? Yeah. I don't mean to steer your thunder on the Q&A. Yeah, no, please. But this is the thing that we really need to be mindful of and watching out for. How many times have you heard in the last year that there's a data center that's noisy in the background, you know, by backyards, making yeah. all this noise. It's sucking up our water. Yeah, they're taking all my water. They're stealing yeah, my yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Well, we can't make more of that. But, you know, at the same time, what are we doing to offset that? We have sustainability initiatives. We have sustainability focus. But when you're building a noisy thing in someone's backyard, I mean, I hate to do the shameless plug, but Park Lane Acoustics, you know, out of Canada, they're building noise cancellation equipment Think and putting in the, the backyard. system that right? we are lifting up from a financial economic perspective just by solving that problem. And I'm in Buffalo, New York, where there really aren't any data centers, but the Bitcoin mining operation to the north, the only thing that anybody yeah. talks about in the media is, hey, this thing makes a lot of noise. So, hey, got news for you, Bitcoin miner in Buffalo. Call Park Lane in Toronto and get them to put their system in so I have to stop listening to you in the news. <laughs> I mean, but, but now we're starting to see another advent, right? So yeah. let's, let's start there and let's say let's make this quieter. Let's start focusing on CO emissions. Let's yes. talk about GHG emissions. Yeah. And let's talk about water consumption. So let's monitor that. Yeah. Let's get real-time data and visualization around that, which is going to be important. But... Some of these people are now starting to come to us. So I've been fortunate with, at IDCA 
where people have come to us and said, look, I'm doing a Bitcoin mining situation. I've got lots of power. I've got an infeed. I've got infrastructure. I have fiber. Thinking about getting into the AI market now. So now what do I do? How do I transition from this thing into that? Yeah. And our advice is you need to start thinking about community engagement. You need to start thinking about a global Thank ecosystem, yes. a global economy, yeah. and what how your play is going to be with that. So I remember back in the day, eh, we're just going to keep doing it our way. Eh, yeah. We're going to just keep taking power and sucking it up. Things are changing. Yeah. And we've got to be dynamic and adapt because if we don't self-regulate, somebody else is going to regulate for us. And I think about the implications of uh, going back to what you first said what feels like two seconds ago yep. um, as far as the next generation workforce if we if we are if we are actively pursuing those dreamers yeah. those people and I'm and dreamers I mean like little kids yeah little kids who are just like wow you mean this technology might be able to help cure cancer or solve for diabetes and and all of this digital infrastructure and the next generation of what that dig digital infrastructure looks like is being developed I want to be a part of that Absolutely. You know, and, and to me, so so you're doing two things. Number one, you're getting them young so that they understand how it works within the community and, and how a data center can work symbiotically within a community. But you're also kind of like fueling that dreamer in them. One of my favorite things to talk about, people ask me how young. That comes up a lot. Yeah. Now, right now, with the age out that's happening and with the need for 300,000 engineers with the boom of, of AI and the need for more infrastructure... Yeah. I try and tell people, as soon as you can learn or do, get them interested. So yes. if you notice some, you know, your, your three-year-old is starting to take apart the remote for the TV, <laughs> I right? I love it, man. Yeah. You're curious. You, yeah. you can do. You can learn. You can experience. You can engage. So I try and tell people, harness that. Take the skills that you have. Everybody has skills. If you have breath in your lungs, you have a skill. Yeah. I just did Dave McCall's podcast at QTS, and I use that quote. I think ping me back. He's like, man, this was, this was money. So Golden. we're going to use it here too, right? <laughs> yeah. So you have breath in your lungs. You have a skill. Yeah. Everybody has that. And I come, I came into this industry with a theater degree and an English degree. I mean, I made my parents real proud by wasting their money, right? Liberal arts. But, but I mean, look at how, look at the opportunities that I've had mm -hmm. to be able to work with people and help people and support the industry. The and best communicate way that this message as effectively as you do. It's do, important. Do you know what I think the one skill is that when I speak with the emerging talent and people coming in at the younger ages, do you know what I think the number one skill is that they lack? Tell me. The ability to do this. Well, it's true. And in, yeah. in my experience, I mean, they've got the math down. Yes. They're calculus yes. geniuses. Yeah. You know, they yeah. understand sustainability initiatives, yeah. if that's their space, nuclear engineering. But the one skill that they desire Mm -hmm. And lack at the same time. So, so this is a, a positive, by the way. Yeah. They want to be able to do this. Yeah. Is hey, I want to go talk to that guy. What do I go over there and say to him? Yeah. I grab him by the arm and take him over. The talent tech initiative going on here. Nomad Future has brought this yeah. thing in last year. We're a big supporter of being able to mentor these people to guide them and show them we're fun. We're dynamic. We're energetic. This is the industry to be in. And the opportunities are endless. Endless. The, uh, 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 unfortunately, this this show is not endless, and we've got to wrap it up. Any final thoughts um, about the show or you know the next ten years? Tell me. Oh my God, the next ten years! I think we need to be very careful on how we're spending money and where we're investing that, okay. and we need to be very conscious that as we're moving down this path, we have a global standardization. I think this is critical. It's the reason that I chose to come on board with IDCA, mm -hmm. that there is global standardization that makes us stronger together because the future is now. Always a pleasure speaking with you, uh, pleasure, Mark. Let's, let's do this again. Uh, incidentally, I too have a theater degree and a journalism yes. degree. Yes! <laughs> Twinsies! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. Stay connected, stay healthy, stay dreaming, and uh, we'll see you soon.